Well, let's see. Where are we at? Uh, for about 10 days. I lost about 10 days. Seven, eight, eight days or so. Uh, grafting intervened. I had to uh, I had to just be on the ball. I had to go go take care of some, some business and I had some meetings with some clients and some training sessions and uh, as far as collecting and sandwich collection and storage and on and on and on that stuff you don't want to hear about so I won't go on about it but anyway it took up a lot of time but you know that's my livelihood that uh, that always takes priority anytime anything to do with grafting comes up I have to drop everything else and I jump on it so that's that, that's my life and it's okay uh, but right now let's see where are we at I did a little uh, did a little boxing on that that uh, that frame horn there as you can see and I am ready to tack this fender into place let me back out a little bit here yeah I'm gonna tack that in place and do the other side and get tacked into place yes I said tack you know how my tacks are I'm gonna try to refrain from doing my tacks and do a normal tack but once I get it tacked into place then I can yank it up in the air and get those wheels off there and get in there and do some serious welding. I'll have room to do that. So that's kind of the the plan for this evening is to get the other fender mocked up as well, get them both uh, tacked into place and get some uh, some framework, uh, some structure built underneath those fenders. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Another biggie just came yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, my radiator's back. My big radiator for this V12 is back. So I uh, hope to get that installed tonight as well. Like I said, Saturday night, I'm working the swing shift tonight. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, this tiny little segment here, just a few seconds, is uh, dedicated to Kerwood. Uh, so, Mr. Kerwood, I'd like for you to know that uh, uh, starting this year, I'll be, uh, what, 57 years, 54 years, 54 years that I've been welding. And I have, uh, I've learned how to, uh, to make a tack weld. See that? Yeah, it's only taken me 54 years. Learn how to make a tack. There's a good one. Inch, inch and an eighth long, five eighths inches wide, burn in real good. That's a tack well, my friend. <laughs> It's always good to keep an axe in your shop. By the way, if you get an itch, well, you can run and grab your axe and scratch that itch. And I just have an itch. And I'm going to see can I scratch it? Like cherry wine. I'm going with the water, tastes like cherry wine. We can jump in the water. 
The itch is scratched. That's all it took. You really do not have to be that meticulous. This is going underneath the fender on the back side and never going to be seen by anyone, but I will know it's there. Got those two pieces kind of kind of mocked up there, clamped in place. This one runs down here and uh, they're pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and now this one actually is better than the fender. The fender is kind of kind of wiggy woggy. That's the international sign for Wiggy Woggy. Really? Okay, Kerwood. There's a little tack. It's just, it's just a tack. That's all. Nothing to worry about. Well, that sure is pretty for something that's just going to be hiding out underneath the fender. You know? I wonder why I do that. You know, my goal was to get this thing up off the floor and take that tire off there, a wheel off there until I could get underneath it and do some real welding instead of just tacking. But, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't make it because, probably because I spent too much time on something like this. It sure is pretty though. Yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's about it for today or for this morning rather. I think I'll go ahead and have some breakfast and go to bed <laughs> or go or go to bed and then uh, get up and have some breakfast something like that I'm not sure well I fabbed up this little piece of metal right here this is a lovely little thing but it's not very substantial and it doesn't need to be for its purpose what it is it's going to it's going to just firm up this part of the fender because you can see it's got all this wiggle it's got all this wiggy woggy wiggy woggy in it it's got a lot of wiggy woggy so uh we're gonna get rid of the wiggy woggy by putting that on there and uh this also wants to kind of wants to kind of dip in here and then let it be pulled out and let's put it in place it's really pretty but it's not substantial enough to mount a running board onto or to hold this fender up uh, it's not, that's not the purpose. That is not its function. It is function is to just, just to fold, hold this fender's shape and get rid of the wiggy wuggy. Now, for supporting this fender and actually holding it up and mounting it to the, to the, uh, frame will be, be something of, uh, much more, much more substantial. Yeah, it'll be a heavier. A much heavier piece and come up frame and come all the way out in here and mount all this and hold that bugger into place. One, two, three, four. I got it one piece at a time and it didn't cost me a dime. Know it's me when I come to your town. I'm gonna ride around in style. I'm gonna drive for a while. Got the only one there is. I welded a nut back here in the back side of that hole because this frame is going to be boxed in. That frame horn totally boxed. So I've got this so I can just throw a bolt in there. But I'm going to tack this on here and on here because I want to make this fender so it unbolts and comes off. All the bracketry on this fender will be bolt on because if I need to get to any of my steering knuckles or the steering box or whatever I think I need to uh, rebuild that box or put a seal in it I'm gonna have everything on this fender bolt on I'll be able to unbolt this fender and yank it off there if I need to or if I just want to so that's what's happening there okay that fender that fender is standing on its own 
I've still got to put in a piece down there that um, holds that in place, and then I can cut that little temporary brace off there, and I'll duplicate everything on the other side. I already have all the templates made now. I just have to flip them over, reverse everything, and do it on the other side. And I might get some of that done before I head for SeaTac and pick Victor up. Boy, it's a dreary old day. It's been a good day to be in the shop, though. And I got the other fender mounted. Yes, sir. Got everything tacked. I said tacked into place. And I've been to, I don't know, several county fairs, a whole bunch of rodeos, three or four goat ropings. But I ain't never, never seen a Mexican wear overalls. <laughs> All right. Fender mounted and we're gonna tackle that radiator I think. Get set up here. Come your way. something on this one side. Well, both, no, just this side. All right. I'm about ready to call it a night. Well, you can't hinge it. It won't, it can't hinge it because it's wider mm -hmm. in the back and you have to pick it straight up out of that frame rails. It, it won't tip forward because it's, goes like this. Yeah. So if you try to tip it, it just wedges itself in there. I had a lot of people ask me about hinging it, but it just, it doesn't work. Now I can get to my welding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On my box, box to frame and weld all that in. That's good, but I don't think I'm going to do it tonight. Getting a little bit tired. I need to make a video. I haven't made a video in about two weeks. Or more. First, First thing I'm going to do is go take a shower. You look kind of like Wade and Wire in those overalls. <laughs> well, let's see where are we at today. It's Sabido. It's Sabido? Yeah. See, Victor? See? Uh, we got the radiator mounted. Um, I had to leave the hood on at first to put the radiator in because I wanted to make sure it still fit after I pulled that nose back because I wasn't sure if it was still going to clear here but it does so after we figured that out then I could pull the nose off and actually go ahead and get it mounted up and I'm going to do some more boxing on this frame and uh, a few things and I might plumb that radiator I might get some hoses and get that plumbed and put some antifreeze in this thing hook up a belt hook up a, a belt and then uh, to run the water pump and circulate some antifreeze through this thing because I'm going to have to park it outside for a little while we need to get the work truck in here every day and load supplies and it just makes it easier to load up and you know, we service saws in here at night, and uh, it's nice to have the truck handy, and it's also nice to have it in a nice warm shop when you take off in the morning. 
You don't have to go out and start the truck and let it warm up and all that. So, yeah, I would, uh, wouldn't mind backing that other one out to Dojalac out over there and put this on the other side so I could still work on it during grafting season. But I have no antifreeze in that Dojalac. And, uh, you know, we're not clear yet. We could still get some hard freezes. It's been cold. And, uh, I just really don't want to spend a hundred bucks on antifreeze right now and that's about what it would take <laughs> two radiators and the two pipes that run from the front of the engine back to the two radiators the pipes alone hold three gallon of water so uh, I'd have to put I don't know how much antifreeze maybe not a hundred bucks worth but quite a bit so we just been kind of waiting on that anyway I'm gonna get crack a lack in here as Mr. Chevaholic would say. Okay, we've been boxing in those frame horns. Um, I'm going in. Geared up. Geared up and going in. And go up just a little bit more, Richard. Four by one. Un poquito más arriba. Dale. Dale, bueno. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're burning in. How many fat guys it takes to put that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put that hood back on. <coughs> yeah. We're going Well, the two monkeys finally figured out it was <laughs> nose was hanging up on the new bracket that we built last night. Once we spread it open a little bit and cleared that, everything went into place. Imagine that. Okay, here's a little something you can y'all can put in your little bag of rat rotter tricks. Talking to the public. I'm talking to the public, Victor. You thought I was talking to you. You and Joshua, you always think I'm talking to you. <laughs> when I'm talking to the camera. Oh, uh, yeah, you can uh, just in your little bag of tricks. If you're using a smooth pipe like that uh, on a radiator hose under pressure, she'll pop off of there, man. So I always. Uh, a little bead or some little spot welds on there. And that'll hold that hold that hose on. Yeah, this is uh, this how I do it. I don't know how you guys do it. That's how I do it. That way, that hose won't pop off. The guy at the muffler shop gave me a hard time. I took these pipes down. I had two of them. One's a 45 and one's a 90. I didn't know which one I was going to use for sure. So I took them both down to have them get them swedged. I put them on his little machine. expanded that out a little so it fits that two and three quarter ID 
hose. And he just gave me a hug. He said, do you think you could have looked around a little bit more and found a crappier piece of pipe? Do you think you could have found a worse piece if you just looked a little harder? I go, no, I think I did the best I could. <laughs> He's a good guy. Thanks, Steve. Listen, guys, there's rocks in the dryer again. Oh, I do love to fabricate metal, Richard. You? Did you notice that? Yeah? I do love to fabricate. Let's see, I got my two straps. Hey, Victor, you want to pull those two bolts out for me? Those two on the manifold where we're going to build this bracket, bolt the bracket to? I like it. I love this stuff, man. I live for this stuff. But I don't know what this little guy's for. The little one? Maybe somebody on YouTube will tell me. Yeah, the little one. Okay, I got hose on there. Another hose clamp on. Figure out where all these hoses go. I know that's an overflow over there. I suppose this is too. But I don't know what this little guy's for. I do not know. Well, that's three gallons of antifreeze. Um, I don't know how much water this thing's gonna hold. I went and looked it up, the specs on this thing. By the way, if anybody's interested in this engine, a lot of people uh, tell me they've never heard of this engine until they, they saw this one. So, a really, really super good website is 6066gmcguy.com and you can look up all about the V6s back in the day 60 to 66 I think they built them and I think they built the 65 I mean the V12 through 65 but they got all the specs on this thing 16 quarts of oil and in the 7000 series trucks the uh, coolant capacity was 74 quarts so so yeah, this thing would, would hold about 18 gallons of water, or uh, coolant. Um, now we're going to start pouring gallons in and keep track of them. I don't know in the 7000 series truck, I don't know what the radiator capacity was, so uh, this one will be a little bit different. This, uh, this radiator came off a 427 tall deck, so no idea what the capacity is, but uh, we're going to find out. Well, what do we wind up, Victor? Nine, nine gallons of water? Nine. Well, water and coolant combined? Or nine just water? No, no, wait. Total? I see one potential problem. What? Well, we're going to have to, you know, you have to burp for the engine just like a baby. Get the air out. And I can see where we might have a bubble right here, air bubble. We've got to have this lower. Well, we can do that. This has got to be the highest point in the whole system right there. And I think we're, yeah, you oh, yeah. know what, we're okay. Uh, there's no water in this hose, so I wonder why. No, I'm going to pop out the water. Hmm? Because this is so little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This We're going to have to circulate the water in here, huh? Well, there goes our battery. Okay. Yeah, we got air in it. We're going to have to get the air out of it for sure. I don't know where that went. I don't think it went in the reservoir. I don't think it had a reservoir because it's got an overflow. Well, yeah, I don't know. But um, I don't think we had to pressure, put pressure on that cap. We'll see. We'll see. We're getting close, though. We've got fuel plumbed in. We're just charging the battery. 
Yeah, that's going to be the challenge is to get the air out of that. Get all the air out of it. I'm going to have to burp it. Okay guys, we're going to leave off here. We've got to charge that battery overnight and we'll get back at it tomorrow. But uh, until I see you the next time, oh, I sure do appreciate you.